Iterative Loop is the new Lightfall fusion rifle in Destiny 2, and it is packed with rapid fire frame perk combos for both PvE and PvP. It's arc with Volt Shot and Kickstart, perks we've never seen before on a fast rapid fire fusion. Kickstart completely changes this weapon in PvP, and you're not gonna believe me on this, but Volt Shot is more deadly on a fusion rifle than any other weapon currently in the game. Don't worry, I'll, I'll show you. Look at how I take just one Volt Shot burst at Carl here and use Wither Horde to take the damage. It just insta-deletes him, and I didn't fire a single other shot. Also, this fusion is craftable, and the enhanced version of some of these perks are really gonna make a difference on the stats once you spec it all out. A rapid fire fusion with 100 stability is unheard of, which is great because at first glance, Iterative Loop does not look great on its base stats. Range, stability, aim assist, heck, all the stats are just very average for a rapid fire frame fusion rifle. There's nothing that stands out. So I'm really glad we have some banger perks. If you're looking to grab those red borders for crafting, Iterative Loop is a Neomuna weapon that drops from activities within the city, and you can acquire normal or deep sight red border drops through heroic patrols, rank ups at Nimbus, or the new escalation protocol type activity called Terminal Overload. Everyone gets one of these fusions automatically through the side quests you pick up from Nimbus during the Lifefall campaign, so be sure to complete that quest. That's how I got my Volt Shot roll, and I'm so pumped I got it early on as I got to use Volt Shot to complete the Legendary Story campaign with. So let's talk about Volt Shot in PvE first, as I think it's how I'm going to end up using this weapon the most. Yes, that Under Pressure Kickstart roll is jacked for PvP, and there's another PvP roll I'll be crafting once I get on my red borders, but we'll go over all the perks at the end. I just want to talk about the exciting highlights first. Volt Shot does more damage on a fusion rifle against a boss than any other weapon with Volt Shot currently in the game. More than a machine gun, more than a linear fusion rifle, and even more than a shotgun, which was the previous king of Volt Shot damage. Very quickly explained, the jolt from Volt Shot ticks at a different damage rate depending on what weapon used Volt Shot to apply it, and it goes by set multipliers for each damage type. Rocket launchers technically have the highest, but we don't have a rocket launcher Volt Shot yet, so this is the highest available. I knew this going into Lightfall, and I thought I would really love this fusion because of it. That wasn't really the case, though. At least not initially. On difficult content like the Legendary Campaign missions, this rapid fire fusion just couldn't put out the juice to get the kill that's needed to proc Volt Shot on a reload. I was often wasting too much ammo and then didn't have enough reserves to be able to reload to proc that Volt Shot. But then, I started really reserving that ammo to just use for the Volt Shot damage and then applied that Volt Shot damage to bigger targets as my team attacked them, like playing against Tormentors or bosses at the end of a level. It was a great way to do massive damage to them. I even used it on the final boss of the campaign and it worked really well as a passive damage tool while I grappled across the map. Trying not to give any spoilers here, but if you know, you know. Having some passive damage applied while you move around the map is really useful. So if you're looking for an iterative loot for PvE, keep that Volt Shot roll. And if you're looking for the best roll, I want to give a very high recommend to the Compulsive Reloader and Volt Shot combo. Compulsive Reloader will give you plus 50 reload and 5% faster reload duration speed on top of that, which if you have a Reload Masterwork 2 will max out your reload stat at 100 for proccing Volt Shot very quickly. Okay, now, PvP. There are two really great combos I want you to look out for and think about crafting once you get your red borders. The first one is Under Pressure Kickstart. Under Pressure is always a go-to fusion rifle perk for me. It hasn't been nerfed like Firmly Planted and Tap the Trigger, so it still provides plus 30 stability and up to minus 50% accuracy cone size. It is very, very good. And it can also be found on other rapid fire fusions, so nothing too new yet, but then we add in Kickstart. Kickstart has never been seen on a rapid fire frame, and it's really cool to see here because it boosts your damage by 20% just for sliding after running for a second. Damage has been one of the big problems with rapid fire frames since they were nerfed after Witch Queen, and so to get this 20% bonus damage for free is huge. In fact, it's such a huge buff that not only does it bring you from the typical 8 bolts to kill down to 7, but if you're running liquid coils, that plus the 20% kickstart buff will take you all the way to a 6 bolt kill against any opponent up to 9 resilience. 
That's only six of your nine bolts that needs to land. Then on top of all of this, you get your charge time off 20% faster as well. So you went from needing eight bolts against nine Rizal Guardians down to six, with a charge time of only 432, when it used to be 500, so it's faster and it's stronger. This sounds amazing, so what are the holdups? Honestly, the only holdup is range and playstyle. If you're not the aggressive sliding on the ground player, this fusion isn't going to work out as well for you. Strand has got a lot of people in the air right now, and being grounded can kind of suck. I'm not saying it's bad by any means. I played around with this role a lot in the Crucible and it is very fast and very strong, but I felt that range fall off and the limitation in playstyle pretty heavily. Kickstart will tie you to the ground and force you to play a very specific way. If that way is for you, then oh my gosh, go have some fun. This is going to be a wicked combo. But for me, there's another combo I've saved for the end here that I think is going to be all around very awesome. Under Pressure and Elemental Capacitor. I don't think it's going to replace Cartesian Coordinate for me since that one's got Under Pressure and Insane Aim Assist stat and the 17 Zoom as opposed to Iterative Loop Standard 15, but I do think this is going to be a very good speed fusion. Maybe one of the best. Take a look at these stats. If I spec out for all range, extended barrel, projection fuse, range mass work, and then craft this with enhanced under pressure and enhanced elemental capacitor, I'm getting plus 25 stability from running void with elemental capacitor and at least plus 30 stability from under pressure, with even stronger effects from the accuracy bonuses. That puts this fusion at 53 range and 90 stability. You could easily make that 100 with chamber compensator. What a weapon. I think this could be a Zealot's Reward replacement as the rapid fusion that puts fear in the eyes of other fusion players. I know I'm jumping the gun a bit, but for the most part, stats don't lie. 9 bolts can be hard to control and max stability while maintaining some great range could be absolutely insane on a rapid fire fusion rifle. If you don't care about the extra stability, you could also run a stasis subclass and a counterbalance mod for the extra recoil control without sacrificing other stats, or even run strand with an Icarus grip to get up to 53 airborne effectiveness without even equipping an exotic. That is an incredibly decent level of in-air accuracy for a fusion rifle, and let's be real, we're all going to be wanting to run strand for a bit. As for the other perks available, Killing Wind is a great option for PvP, but I feel like Under Pressure will be much more useful on this weapon since Rapid Fires really struggle to connect their bolts after the nerf they got in Witch Queen. While Rounded will be a similar story, Under Pressure is just so good and gives an actual accuracy bonus rather than straight stats. Grave Robber is cool to see, but without Golden Tricorn or Swashbuckler in the other column, it loses a lot of appeal to me. It would have been cool to see some of those options on this fusion for PvE. We do get Adrenaline Junkie, but it has Demolitionist in the same column, which kind of kills it for me. Slick Draw, on a very difficult archetype to use it on, will be interesting. While it's not for me, I could see some mouse and keyboard players actually enjoying this. Then, Lead from Gold is one you could sub out for my Compulsive Reloader combo with Volchot. Lead from Gold is a great way to just keep the ammo flowing. Pugilist is here, that's cool, but rip, no swashbuckler. Adagio is a big no-no for me on fusions. If you liked it on Likely Suspect, you are likely sus, but this perk is here for you. My thinking here is, I don't ever want to go slower after I get a kill, I want to move faster. The fact that Adagio is enhanced here gives me a bit of pause because that 8 seconds is a little bit longer to use the perk and think about your next move, but I don't know. I'll need to play around with it some more and see if the damage is worth it on this one. Last thing, the Nanotech Tracer Rockets. This is basically a version of the little mini rackets on Quicksilver Storm. In PvE, you might get the slightest, and I mean slightest, bit of extra damage from them on your fourth shot, but in PvP, this will essentially never make a difference unless you're on a streak and you're operating with an adaptive at base against a higher result guardian. Thing is, it doesn't activate until your third full shot with the iterative loop fusion. And so between that and the circumstances to actually get the rocket, it'll just be extremely rare. That's it for the Lightfall Fusion Rifle initial review. I'll do a follow up once I have it crafted and I plan on going over many, many of the other weapons, armor mods, and strand abilities this season. But thanks for joining me on this one. Until next time, GG.